Today has been a long time coming because I haven't had access to the tool grid organization system from Mantis up until I think last month was the first time I was actually able to get access to it through my primary distributor. So I was bummed out because I was watching the Cornwell and Maco guys who, with whom I have mutual customers sell these things. And I was on the outside looking in, but I finally have access to them because my distributor decided to start carrying them after. Oh, I know I, I know a bunch of people and I have all said to them, hey, man, you got to carry these because we're missing out on a bunch of sales unless you do. So they finally, thank you very much, ISN, got access to it. I know Medco, which is my secondary distributor, also carries them. So thanks, guys, for making them available to me because it's a competitive advantage that I was without for a long time. I think this system came out well, at least a couple of years ago, I think. If you've seen them um, before then, let me know. Uh, but I thought they were the most wonderful things in the world. And the great thing about this system is that it will take your organization to a whole new level. There is one downside, however, and that is once you've committed to how you've laid out your board, it's, it's an undertaking to change it. So just make sure that you're either organizing full drawers or you leave space on the grid for additional tools if you know that you're going to be adding additional socket sets or screwdrivers or pliers or whatever it is. And in fact, you can also arrange it drawer by drawer because the way the grid is designed is it, it's, it's on a flat board with holes in it and it lays in your tool box or tool cart drawer and then you put the, the clips in it and you put your tools on it. If you look at the toolbox tour that I did with uh, Garrett Seesing, you can click up here to look at that, you'll see that he uses tool grids in a couple of the drawers of his box. The top drawer of his box, he stores ratchets and sockets and other miscellaneous items, but then he has the drawer below it that he's dedicated to pliers and wrenches, I think. Um, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. So he's got a grid in the top drawer for some tools and a grid in the drawer below it for other tools. However you want to organize these things is entirely up to you and what works best for your workflow in the shop. But just know that changing it, while it can be done, it's kind of a pain because each one of these clips I'm going to show you sets in the board with a set screw. And it's great for security. Nothing's going to move around on it, but it kind of stinks if you got to change it. So just plan ahead accordingly and plan for expansion if you know that that's in your future or you're going to have to spend extra time undoing and redoing things as you go. Either way, it's not a big deal. I think it's a system that has has given uh, guys a lot of a lot of organization that they don't normally have and if you're new to the industry or you're flagging hours for a living you will know if you don't already you'll know soon enough that being organized means that you'll be more efficient you'll be able to find tools faster you won't spend time looking for something as much and that means that you'll get to service more cars in the same period of time so more hours for you and you'll get paid more. So this is one of many efficiency steps you can take to make your job faster, easier, and more profitable. So when you look at something like this in and of itself, is it gonna make you a whole lot of money? No, probably not. But this combined with tools like, I don't know, a form of funnel, for example, and maybe instead of that radial, uh, cordless or electric ratchet that you've got, you upgrade to a high-speed one from Milwaukee. Or maybe you've got these other things in mind that you want to do to make yourself more efficient. This is one of many things you can do. And combined as an efficiency initiative from your part, you will, in fact, make more money every year as, uh, the, the faster and more efficient that you get. So enough of that. Let's go through the tool grid system, and I'll show you how I place the clips on it. And I'm just using a subset of tools here. I'm not going to fill out an entire grid. Uh, I'm just using the tools that I got at home. Um, and you'll see easily how it will apply to your setup in the shop. First off, the grid panels come two to a package. Each panel is 23 and a half inches by 25 inches. So they're large enough to fit in most toolbox drawers. If you want to put one in your cart or you want to maybe double them up in a the drawer if you don't have enough space. You can cut these. So feel free to cut them to size, depending on uh, how big your, your drawers are. That sheet there is one that just shows all the different clips that come with the grids and what you can put on them and what their purpose is. They've got clips for screwdrivers and 
sockets and wrenches, ratchets. They've got some that are specific to holding handles or um, universal ones that aren't specific to anything at all. And I'll show you how the universal ones work a little bit later. The first ones we're gonna start with are these ratchet ones here. So in the box comes ratchet handle holders, uh, screwdriver handle holders is in the same box here. We're gonna start with screwdrivers, sorry. And uh, I'll show you that they have these large handle holders and they have smaller handle holders. So one end you'll use for the, for the handle and then the other end you use for the tips. That was a, um, a ratchet drive head holder. And they have quarter, three eighths and half inch drive sizes. They go, those come three to a pack. This is a quarter drive ratchet, three to a pack. And there's your three eighths drive ratchet holder. And again, that's for the drive side. And for the handle side, we'll use the handle holders. And I'm just figuring this out too as I go, because this is the first time I've ever opened these, this product at all. So I'm just figuring it out. They also come with a package of 100 Torx head screws. These are the set screws that you'll use to place your clips once you have it all laid out. Also a sheet of labels comes with each and they give you labels that are numbered one to a hundred. You can use these forever you want. Their suggestion is that you use them to um, correspond a tool to a holder location. I'll show you that in a second. So their instruction sheet that comes with it shows you what the usage suggestion is for each tool type. And then it shows you here label locations on each of the holders, as well as where to put a corresponding label on your tools. Now, I love the idea that you have, say, a number 20 on your pliers, and that goes into the number 20 holder that you have labeled on there. But, uh, you know, good luck making the label stay on your tool. I, it's, it's a great idea. I just don't know the... Uh, the effectiveness of it in real life and I don't think I know anybody who has this system that actually uses the labels like that but anyway we're gonna lay out three screwdrivers here and I'll show you how the handle holders work this is the larger holders and we'll use these for the handle end and then later on uh, as I was figuring this out I didn't know exactly what we're gonna use for the tips for the screwdrivers but we use these smaller handle holders for the tips I'll show you that last And again, because I'm kind of learning this as I go, I'm trying different sizes. This is a package of these smaller tool handle holders. And come to find these were not large enough for the handles on the screwdrivers. I tried that and it's just not fitting in there. So I, I swapped those out for the larger sets. So the smaller handle holders are good for smaller handle tools like ratchets where the larger handle holders are good for even smaller screwdrivers. Their handles are, are too big for the smaller holders. Now we're gonna lay out a 3 8 ratchet and a quarter inch ratchet. And just lay it all out beforehand to get a general idea of how you want it set up. And then grab the appropriate clips. And what I found is if I just, you know, lay them out first, lay the tool in there, and then I can line up, for example, on the, on the ratchets, uh, you, you're not gonna be able to line them up right unless you know how far one clip is supposed to lay from the other. So I'm gonna use a 3 8 ratchet head holder here. And I'm gonna put on the tool end first and then figure out what holes it's gonna to go to in the grid. And the nice thing about doing it this way first is it gives you a chance to see how everything lays out, then you can adjust stuff as you go. This is a package of the quarter drive ratchet head holders.
and I had to adjust the 3 8 ratchet because the handle is a little too far back in the holder. So just move it up one set of holes and presto changeo, it's right where you want it to be. Next we're going to lay out some 3 8 sockets. In this box are clips for quarter, 3 8 and half inch drive sockets. They have sets of blue from metric and sets of red for standard. So you just choose whatever color you want. Normally, industry standard is blue for metric and red for standard. And these also come with a sheet of labels. And there's your quarter drive holders. I get three eighths drive holders. Here's your half inch. 25 clips to a bag. And of course, your set screws. Another advantage to a system like this is as you lay out your sockets, the spacing of your clips is gonna change based on the size of the socket. So with the smaller sizes, I can put the clips right next to each other. And then after a certain size, I think it's 15 millimeter, I have to space them apart, an extra set of holes to make room. So it gives you some latitude in how you do that. I enjoy any kind of system like this that gives you options. And I just am rotating the clips 180 degrees because I just want to line up all the screw holes to be on the same side. It really doesn't matter functionally. But if you're going to use a system like that, looks really do matter because that's the point. And the neater it looks, the better off, it, better off you're going to be because hey, you're going to be able to find what's missing if something's not where it belongs and you're going to be able to reach right for something to get exactly what you need. Interestingly enough, I've got a 10 millimeter socket in this set, but I, I am missing my 13. <laughs> I think it's on a tool out in the garage, but I wasn't sure. And instead of wasting a whole ton of time trying to find it, I decided I'm just going to skip the 13 in the holder here and go right to the 14 like I did there. And then you can see when I put the 15 down, it's too close to the 14. So I slide that up another set of holes and there it is. And there's your almost complete set of sockets. Next, you're gonna lay out some wrenches and I'll show you how the wrench clips work. There are three sizes of clips. First size is for small wrenches and then they have medium wrench size clips and then large wrench clips. You can't put any size wrench in this system that you want. You can put your stubbies in here, your regular length wrenches, even your extra long beam wrenches can all be accommodated by this system. Here's the small ones. Here's your mediums. And then you'll see how the large ones are actually a different design. Instead of inserting the wrenches on end, you're gonna put the more, um, like the beam flat in that holder and it's angled up so you can read the sizes okay. I didn't have any large size wrenches, but I have these five wrenches here, three smaller ones and two medium sized ones. So I'll just show you how those lay out. On these, you're gonna use two clips per wrench.
And as I lay them out, I'm going to put them in a V shape so that as the length of the wrenches increases with each size, the width between the clips also increase. Just like if you were to put these in a regular wrench rack, you're doing the same kind of layout here on the grid. And there's your first three smaller sizes with the increasing distance between clips. And then we'll move to the medium sized ones. And I didn't like how close I had these to the socket, so I'm just going to slide them over. And that's the whole idea with, with this grid system. You lay it out beforehand, space everything the way you want. And once you're happy with the layout you got, you just use those set screws, drive them in the holes, and set everything down. And there's your wrenches. And they also have, like the other clips, a sheet of labels. And they have different colors, obviously, like the sockets. The red is for standard, blue is for metric. These corner holders can be used for, say, if you have a socket tray or like one of those plastic spindle socket racks. If you want to take the whole tray out of there, you can just use those, socket hold, uh, those corner holders. This cam holder is really interesting because you can put these on the grid in any number of ways. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, these are uh, more the, the the tool handle holders and then these are universal holders these are the medium sized ones and there are smaller ones I'll show you in a sec and these can be used for lots of odd shapes uh, they're to be used for pliers and I'll show you how you use those for a smaller and larger set of pliers So each of these universal holders has a swivel arm on it. And that swivel's 90 degrees, and where you decide to place that arm is going to dictate the width of something that that holder can accommodate. So a regular pet set of pliers goes right in there, and if you had something that was wider, you could just pivot that arm out of the way and uh, accommodate something larger. So once you have it set, you can play around with you know, where you put that arm, size it for what you need, drive the set screw in there, and then set the width of the tool that that will accommodate. It's a pretty clever design. And then here's the medium size universal holder for larger pliers. And I'll give you a comparison here to see the small on the left, obviously, and the medium on the right. The small pliers fit just fine in the first holder, but a larger set of tongue and groove pliers wouldn't fit in a smaller holder, so you need the medium holder for it. And they fit perfectly in the medium sized ones, just like that. Now, getting back to those cam holders, those are good if you have, say, uh, a power tool that you want to lay down on the grid. You would use that to put them in the corners of the tool so you can lay out kind of an outline of where the tool goes. Now here's where I'm using the small handle holders as tip holders for the screwdrivers. They fit perfectly.
and here it is all laid out. It's a small grouping of tools, but it gives you the idea of A, how to lay everything out, B, what the different clips are used for, and see how they all work together on the same grid. I think that there is not a storage system that makes your tools display better than the tool grid. I'm, I'm really sold on this idea. I mean, how nice would it be looking in your drawer, seeing everything laid out just like that, and, and picking what you need and saving yourself a ton of time. You can use the handle holders for extensions. You can use the universal holders for all kinds of, of tools. Really, how you want to use them is entirely up to you and it's limited only by your imagination. I hope this was informative. I really think that when you see this system in action, it's really what sells the idea. Everyone thinks that, yeah, I wish I was more organized or maybe I need to be, or maybe you think, ah, man, I, my organization's just fine. Well, maybe this will change your mind and, and you realize, geez, there is other ways for me to be neater, more efficient, lay out my box cleaner, have faster access to the tools that I need. And maybe this is one of those tools that'll get you there. So keep watching because in the future we've got all kinds of videos coming up, including a new flyer drop video that's going to hit the end of March, early April. And of course our regular Tools in the Hall video. So do me a favor, click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool. Don't be one.